Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Quantum Listener. I'm, as always, David Ellis. I'm actually wearing a colorful shirt this time. Today, for a change, we're going to talk about something more from the audience perspective. That is, where should the audience sit? A very significant detail in the listening experience in a concert. Ever since the birth of the orchestra, really, of opera, we have this idea that concerts or operas or plays should really be on a stage in front of the audience and separated from the audience. But that certainly wasn't true all the time. My group Earth and Air is about to have a concert this Friday. It's going to be a program of six tets by Borodin, Rimsky, Korskov, and the Tchaikovsky Souvenir. And one of the things I had to consider was, are we going to do the traditional arrangement? Here's a diagram just for you to get an idea. As you can see, the group is in a semicircle on the stage, not dissimilar to what you would see in an orchestra. The audience is in its usual place, maybe about five feet away, minimum. There are actually a lot of positives to it. For one, you can control balances better that way. And this is something that we have grown very accustomed to in classical performances, the separation of the ensemble from the audience. I thought we would borrow a concept from early music, and that idea is sitting in the round. As was discussed in the last video, one of the instruments I play is the viola da gamba. And contrary to what a lot of people have seen of the viola da gamba, either on this channel or on a variety of sources, it's not just an instrument that has the size of the cello, but they do come in treble, tenor, and bass sizes. Those sizes, by the way, equate to violin, viola, and cello. So the simplest way to define a consort of viols really is just imagining a string quartet, but with viols. Now we don't know how every consort of viols performed. What we do know is that they were mostly amateur. So the audience really would be more than anything else themselves the players. They would all sit down in a circle and play viol. And there are hundreds of pieces for this kind of group. Technically easy, but very musically sophisticated. And we know at least some of them played it around, if not the majority, because if you look at the music, as you can see, we have multiple parts on one page. Each part is angled on the page accordingly so that the entire group can sit around the same piece of paper. Now, it may not seem that much of a difference between a semicircle and a full circle, but as many people who have played viol de gamba or really have just sung in a circle will tell you that it's a very different experience. It's much more intimate, you feel much more connected to your fellow players or singers. I thought for the sake of experimentation, we would try something like that for this concert. So as you can see on this diagram, we truly have a circle for the sextet, and then the audience will be seated around. This is admittedly going to be more of an experiment than it is going to be a way that I think everything should be played. For one, the music for concerts of vials is certainly distributed in such a way that every voice has about an equal amount of notes and an equal amount of importance. Tchaikovsky is not that way. You have a melody, you have a bass, and you have all the voices in between. So it may be that this arrangement may not be the most ideal for these pieces. But in the space that we're playing in, it does serve a purpose in that now we can bring the audience closer to the group. Instead of being, say, five feet minimum from the ensemble, the audience can truly be almost right behind the players. We're not quite going to do that because we don't want the audience reading over anyone's shoulder. But we do hope that we can translate a bit of the experience to the audience of what it's like to sit in a group like this. That chamber music is not necessarily about who has the melody and who is more or less important. It's much more about how the cogs of the machine fit together. At the same time, we're going to be doing some pieces that aren't traditionally played that often, specifically the Borodin and the Rimsky Korskov. I have to say the group is very, very good. I'm excited to see how it goes because it will be one well, of the first times that I have performed on modern cello in about a year and a half. Hope to see you there. If I don't see you there, see you next week.